Okay, hello and uh, welcome. My name is David Hawkins. Um, thank you for purchasing one of my templates. So this video is just going to basically give you uh, an overview of kind of the whole template uh, and show you the everything you need to know um, to get it to work the way you want. There will be uh, some other um, tutorials which might go a bit more in depth uh, into some of the more advanced stuff, but this is going to give give you the essentials. So let's jump straight into this. Uh, you're probably going to receive um, a composition, something like this, um, which has the original um, the original um, animation, uh, which you saw in the promotion. Um, what we're going to do in this video, we're actually going to delete all of these all of these uh, pre-compositions here. Each pre-composition represents a letter. This is going to make more sense <laughs> in a minute, so don't worry too much. It might look a bit um, uh, a bit busy at the moment, but uh, it's going to make sense soon enough. Uh, so first of all, let's just clear our head a little bit, um, and I've just selected that bottom composition. I'm holding Shift, I'm going to give that a click, and I'm going to delete all of those. Okay, so right now we've got nothing going on there. It's just kind of an empty composition. We've got the effects here, uh, which we'll go into very shortly, but um, there's no there's no writing. Um, on the paper. So uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to delete all of these comps here, which you won't need, at least at the outset. We'll delete those, go to the top, and here's your, uh, basically your initial template, which is going to uh, lay the foundation, uh, as it were. So we're just going to drag that in here, like this. Um, but also, what you're going to see is there's um, within the letter comps folder, there's some other um, compositions here. So what are they? Well, each composition here, each pre-composition represents um, a letter. Um, and so for every letter that's written with the typewriter, we're going to have one of these compositions. But it's not as simple as that because, of course, there are different fonts, some wider than others. And so the project comes with three different widths. Um, which um, are different settings on the kerning. Uh, now just quickly, the kerning is essentially this uh, setting here, it's the width between the letters. So here um, by default there is a, a, a width of 100 uh, between the letters. Um, there is a setting which is the S here for small, which is 0, and then there's uh, large which is 200. So N is the, is the 100 here. Um, so let's just Go one step further here. You can see these guidelines. Um, it's this uh, kind of um, distance between here. That's kind of medium there. If we go here, it's it's a lot larger. Um, and then if we come back into small, you can see it's very small. So that's kerning. Um, it's uh, it's uh, it's a really interesting idea. Um, so, but if you, if you want to look more into that, uh, I certainly invite you to. Uh, but it's a nice it's a nice concept to understand when you're uh, getting into design. So uh, what we're going to do we're going to keep this really simple. Um, in this in this tutorial we're just going to use the default uh, font. Uh, I invite you to try other fonts. Of course I expect you to have your own font. Um, and uh, if if your font is quite wide then you might want to use uh, the L here. Um, but it's the same principle so it should be very intuitive. Okay. Now the first thing you want to realize is uh, this pre-composition here, there are actually hidden layers and I'm going to go into this in a bit of detail in another video um, but you can see you've got the camera, you've got kind of the sepia effect, the vignette, all the various effects which build up the kind of vintage look. Um, what's important here is actually the placement uh, of, of our letters. Right, if it's too low, it's not going to be seen because it's beneath the paper layer here. So it needs to go above the paper, right? And you can see our, our typewriter shows up. But also it's got to go beneath uh, the sepia and the vignette and the vintage treatment. Otherwise, uh, if we move this up here, um, if it goes to, whoops, if it goes to the top, of course it, it's not going to have the effect applied to it. So let's bring that down. Uh, the place we want it is above the paper and just beneath the real slip here, okay? But the good news is once that's in place, uh, you can forget that, uh, those hidden layers, and then we can just work um, in this format here. Because every 
additional composition you bring in, it's going to go above, it's automatically going to be placed where we need it. Okay, it's going to go beneath those layers. So let's get rid of that and uh, let's get to it. Okay, so as I say here, we're going to recreate the title from the promo video, which is the written memoirs. Um, so this here represents our first letter. So if we double click here, what we're going to do, we're going to make sure that um, our cursor is at the front there. I'm going to hold down control and shift and I'm just going to hit right on uh, the directional pad and that's going to take us forward 10 frames. As you see, our letter appears here and it's actually already set up. So what we can do here is enter any letter or number that we want. And in this case, we want the T. What you can also do, of course, at this point, before you've got all of the pre-composition set up, you can actually change your uh, letter. Okay, so for example, if it's, you know, this isn't really a, a written um, font, but if it's Windings 2, you can see it's quite wide, just to give you the example, so you might want to use the larger, um, uh, the larger kerning setting there. Uh, but in, for this uh, demonstration, I'm just going to use the typewriter. Uh, if I can find it. Ah, uh, travel. Okay, cool. So, there it is. Um, and in here, we can ignore this for the moment um, because I'm going to create a separate video to go into uh, into the sound there. But now we've got our letter, our letter. Uh, that's all we need to move on to the next stage. So now what we want to do is we want to count how many letters we have in our animation until we get to the end and until we have what I call the page back, which is where we see um, all the all of the words kind of zooming past the camera with, with motion blur as the camera tracks back. So what you want to do is count the number of characters. Now, I've already done this and it comes to 17, um, but bear in mind that's without spaces. So let's, uh, let's actually do this and then it's going to make a lot more sense. Um, so we'll come to letter, medium kerning, which is what I'm using. So if it's 17, we're going to click on the pre-composition within the projects panel. Um, we're not going to do it down here, otherwise it gives us an exact du exact duplicate, um, and we don't want that. We want to be able to change the letter on each pre-composition. Uh, changing the uh, pre-composition in the projects panel allows us to do that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold down Control and press D until we get to 17. Lovely. Okay. And I'm going to select from two, come down, hold down shift, and I'm just going to drag them to above, if you remember, our first letter, like so. So this is just a really quick way to get all of our letters, letters in place. Um, if we click off that now, we hide that. Next up, we'll want to add our spaces. So we've come down to space comps here. And again, there are three comps. There's a large, medium, and small. We want to come to medium. We're going to come down here. We, of course, haven't um, added our, in our letter just yet. That it's all the same letter. But if we have T, H, E, the, and then we'll add in our space afterwards. Um, written, W, R, I, T, T, E, N. Give that a click so we can find it. Cool. And then we'll come up here and then we'll do the last word. Memoirs. So, okay, we've got our spaces. Awesome. Now we're ready to actually start assigning the letters. So we've already assigned the first letter, which is T. Now we'll start assigning the rest. So hopefully the cursor is in the right place because it reveals our letter. We're going to just go through here and um, edit all of the letters. So this might be a little long-winded, but this is quite a fast way to do it. Space M, we don't need to do anything because it's just a space. Um, v, we'll close this so it keeps everything kind of tidy and manageable. Uh, R, I believe. 
I oops T small T small T small E small N and then we've got the space and by the way if you've got any questions on this you know don't feel free to to send me a question um, you can get me on my website 3d my business as well um, so don't hesitate don't struggle in the dark um, hopefully this is this is quite um, a helpful video but if not you know just you can <laughs> wrangle my neck um, if it's not as easy as as I intended so e small m O, this is where I figure out my spelling is terrible. I, R, and S. So you can see here that they're all on top of each other, which obviously isn't what we want. Um, we've just got to position them. So if we stop that, um, if we come down, Start right at the beginning as well and just bring this in so it's a little bit more easier to move everything. We've got our first letter here, so that needs to stay the same. I'm actually going to um, show you the way that I do it, which uh, is quite a fast way to, to, to position all of these. If we have the cursor at the beginning, hold down Control Shift, right click. You can see that I've already left a marker here, so it should make it easier. But if you hold down shift, you've got all of these selected. There it is. Hold down shift and pull it along. And then control click on the bottom. Control shift, right click. And then we'll just bring it along. And then you, sh you, you should be able to get to the point actually where you don't have to move the cursor forward. But it's always a... Uh, Helpful if you can uh, get in the habit of doing that, because uh, you might not be as accurate as you plan. Right click, drag it over, give it a click. Oops. Control Shift, and we're done. Okay, cool. So we'll go back to the beginning, and we'll give that a play. So you can see that we've got all the effects there, it looks okay, but it's not the same as how it's meant to be. Okay, that's obviously what you're seeing there is the, the wheel slip. Uh, we'll get onto that in another video. Oh, there it looks like there's one that I missed there. Wonderful. That looks good to me. I'm recording this on a on a small smaller screen, so it's uh, it's uh, easier for for everyone to see. Okay, so now we've got that. As we're saying, um, it it looks good, but it's not exactly how we want it to be. So what's the problem? Well, basically, it's because all of these precompositions are still on two uh, D layers. We need to make them three D. So what you can do, if we get some more space here. Just click and drag your cursor across all of those and you'll see that now we've turned them into 3D layers, we actually um, include them in the, the camera shake, um, which is uh, known as the wiggle expression, quite a, quite a popular expression, which uh, again I'll get into in another video. But now we're kind of looking uh, a bit more kind of professional, a bit more, um, a bit more complete. So just to finish off this um, tutorial now, uh, well done for sticking with me here. What we're going to do is we're going to add a page back, or what I call a page back, I don't know the technical term, um, but we're going to come uh, page back comp. Again, there's a, kind of a long, a medium, and a short, and this is where you're seeing um, all of the, the writing, okay? Um, kind of um, zoom by. Um, so I'm going to drag all of these into our composition and we're going to have a quick look at all of them just to see how it works. Again, uh, the positioning is 10 frames. 
So we'll bring that forward. Lovely. You should find that it kind of sticks to where the cursor is. Um, and what we're going to do, I'm going to show you each, uh, or the, the, the short and the long. So when it comes to the short, if we give that a play, it looks like the old memoir isn't working exactly how we wanted it to. Wonderful. So if we play this, you can see that the blue writing is there and now it's over. But with the longer uh, page back, it actually continues on for, for, for a lot longer. Okay, so um, basically you're going to want to use the long one if you're writing a sentence, um, of course, but if you're writing a title like in this example, you'll probably just want to use um, the short page back. Okay, um, so we'll switch that off and we'll switch back on the short page back and we'll give that a quick play. There's the S and back it goes. And then one more thing, because it's not immediately clear, I'm going to add uh, one more medium kerning. So we're gonna come down, last one, Control D, just to copy that over. Bring that there, I'm gonna bring this up. And instead of going 10 frames ahead of the previous comp, we're actually gonna start this composition at the end of where the page back finishes. So just here. And you're gonna see that we kind of get the effect we're looking for. So you've got the, the text zooming by, and then you've got the, um, the kind of restart, if you like, when you're back at the front of the page. Now, the reason why all of these compositions are the same length is to keep it simple. Um, you know, moving forward 10 frames at a time, it makes things a lot easier to use. But also, um, there's kind of a side effect here, uh, which is that when you're using the long page back, um, the blurry writing, of course, ends about here, and immediately you're onto the next line. Well, you're gonna to want to use that for kind of when you're, when you're in a paragraph of writing, right? So it makes sense to go back um, straight to um, the, the beginning of the line or to have that transition to be very quick. So we've got blurry writing and immediately we're at the beginning of the line. But when you're using a title and you use the short page back, it makes sense to have more space, right? And to have more white space, more kind of uh, redundancy here, because it's almost as if you're moving down the page and you're reorienting the camera or you know the typewriter um, and you're starting a new paragraph. So that's just a little bit of the, the theory behind that. Um, so that's the, the main video. I hope it wasn't too long. I'll try to edit this down as much as I can because I know it can be um, a little long-winded um, or I can be <laughs> a little long-winded. Um, but in the other videos, we're basically going to be looking into uh, hidden layers for some of the more advanced stuff. So we're looking to the real slip, which you saw uh, kind of a, a preview of uh, earlier on. We'll look into the camera shake with the wiggle expression as well, how we can change the wiggle expression, how we can reduce the camera shake, how we can increase the camera shake. Um, I'll make a video on um, speeding up the animation and slowing down the animation. Um, I'll look into... Um, We'll do that with a uh, time remapping, which is really simple. Um, it's basically in the top composition here. Um, we'll look into advanced letter customization, um, where every letter comp comes with six different keystroke sounds. Uh, so we did see that earlier. Um, so you can make sure your typewriter doesn't sound monotonous. It is fully optional, um, but it's just you know something there to increase the um, the kind of realism there, make it a bit more professional. Um, there's an option to mirror the hammer. Um, so the default hammer um, kind of comes in from the left to the right here, but there's an option. If you're using keys on the right hand side, there's an option to use a right-handed hammer. Again, that you know it's something that most people won't uh, look twice at, but it's something there. It's nice to have that added realism, I think. And then finally, I'll show you how to render with sound, motion blur, and uh, in a web-ready format, H.264. So um, I hope that was useful. Um, you know, give me feedback, uh, whether, you know, at Video Hive or on my website, and uh, I hope that you enjoy the project.